Hazaku Baruch, thank you, Rabbi Sardar. Thank you so much to Roy and the board, the committee, the synagogue, the community for welcoming us from uh, over the bridge, from the Chazak team, with open arms. It's not my first time, you know, standing here. But um, I'm a little bit excited, more than usual this time. I'm not sure if it's the a uh, little bit of uh, Lebanese in me that feels at home, or maybe it's, um, uh, you know, the fact that there's so much buzz going on in the community about this synagogue, about this makom, through the Torah center, through the learning, through the praying, through the programs, the events, or maybe it's the uh, recently added staff member to your roster, who I happen to know, my brother Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi. And honestly, I'm not sure who I'm happier for, if I'm happier for the synagogue or for my brother, because my brother scored to be part of an amazing, amazing kehillah, but the, the synagogue, the kehillah scored to get an amazing, amazing rabbi. My, bro my brother's not here today, so I could share this with you. The other day I got an email from somebody in South Africa. It's a true story. And he says, hi, Rabbi Mizrahi, heard so much about you. I listen to you on Torah anytime, and you are amazing. And we're having this amazing weekend Shabbaton in South Africa with top speakers and rabbis from all over the world, and we want you to come. By the way, is this Rabbi Yaakov Mizrahi? <laughs> I'm like, no, you got the wrong rabbi. Baruch Hashem, so honored to be here. And uh, we should be zocheh to a ketiva v'hatima tova that Hashem should open our hearts in the next few days to the different words of chizuk that we're going to hear. You know, the word that's on everyone's mind in these days is teshuva. That's what it's all about. That's what we're thinking about. We're thinking about teshuva. We're thinking about repentance. A matter of fact, the rabbis have this to say about teshuva. Our rabbis say that actually the first teshuva ever done was on which day of the week? Shabbat. The first teshuva was done by Adam Harishon, and he did teshuva on Shabbat. After eating from the tree, the sunset, Adam thought the world was coming to an end. He never saw a sunset before. It was the first one. He was born on Friday. He sinned on Friday. The sun set on Friday. He never saw a sunset from the Thursday night and Wednesday night. And all of a sudden, he repented the whole night. And in the morning, the sun rose again. And Adam, he realized this is the way of the world. And he wrote a song. He wrote a song uh, thanking God for the opportunity of Teshuvah. We know the song, by the way. We all sing it every week. Mizmor Shir Leyom HaShabbat. A beautiful song, a very powerful song. Without going into detail, if you look through the song though, it has nothing to do with Teshuvah. And so what I want to just talk about tonight for a few moments is what's the connection? How does Teshuvah connect to Adam HaRishon and how does it connect to Shabbat? There's a very powerful sefer that everyone here must own, but more importantly must study. They must have. The Sefer is called the Mesilat Yesharim, written by Ramhal, Rav Moshe Haim Lotato, an Italian scholar, around 300 years ago. And in this book, he says that there may be number one key to success in life. The reason people succeed, the reason there are people that are better than others, is not because they're smarter, not because they're more talented, not because they're stronger, not because they have more. The reason people succeed comes down to a five-letter word. People that succeed know how to think. Thinking is the key to success in life. A successful speech is written because before the speech, I'm thinking about what I want to say. The better the thought, the better the speech. Anyone that watches sports knows 
that the better team is not always the one that wins. The team that wins is the one that prepared better from Monday to Sunday. In life, if we think, we will be saved from so many problems. How many people, unfortunately, have addictions because they never thought? Because they were handed something when they were in a car or in a house or in a classroom or in a park. The number one regret in America is getting a tattoo. Immediately afterwards, there is regret. Because sometimes in life we do things without thinking exactly what it is that we want to do. We're offered something. Be very, very careful when somebody comes to you and says, here, I have an amazing business deal. You're going to get back 30%. It's a no-brainer. But you have to answer me by tonight. Because we need to know there's very limited spots. Whenever someone tells you not to think, run away. Very, very dangerous in life to not think. The Yetzir Hara knows that if we think, we will be successful. The only job of the Yetzir Hara is to get us to not think. He is happy if you learn. He's happy if you pray. He's happy if you go do chesed. He's happy if you do whatever mitzvah you like. But don't stop and think about what you're doing. Because the moment we think, he's finished. How many people get into trouble because they said something without thinking? You know, there was a personality in the Torah that embodies the Yetzir Hara. And he knew the danger of thinking. The Mesilat Yisharim says, we find this in who? In Paro. Remember when Moshe came and he said, listen, we're thinking, this is not a good deal over here. We're working for you, we're your slaves, and it's not working out for us. We want to go free. What did Paro say? Paro didn't say no. Paro said, one second. Are you thinking, Moshe? How do you have time to think? Why are you thinking? Must be you have too much free time. And what did Paro do? He added work because he knew that if the Jewish people think. How many times you speak to people that look back at the Holocaust and they said, I don't understand. If everybody got together and they charged and they stormed and they did. But that's because we're thinking. Hitler in Mahshemo didn't let the Jewish people think. David Amelech says, Al tihiyu kesus kefered en havin. Don't go through life like a horse. What does it mean, don't go through life like a horse? They give an amazing mashal. Listen to this example. You ever saw battlefield, two armies ready to fight, two nations, and each side each nation on one side of the hill, the other side of the hill, and they're ready, and each one has their captain, their general, the king, and they're charging him up, and they're getting him pumped. And all of a sudden, the shofar is sounding, and the trumpets, and charge, and everyone's going, and they're running to each other, right? Dun, 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 and they're going. And all of a sudden, pause. Imagine you just paused as everyone's charging. And you walked onto the battlefield in paused mode. And you went over to the king. He said, Mr. King, I have a question for you. What are you doing? Why are you charging? Why are you running into the middle of a battlefield? The king will tell, well, of course. You know, my, my father was the king. His father was the king. It's all about remaining the king. If I'm not the king, I'd rather die. Okay. Make sense? You go to the general. Mr. General, you're not the king. You will never be the king. Why are you doing this? The general says, are you kidding me? Do you know how much honor I get? I, when I go back home, they stand up for me. They bow to me. 
they parade me, they salute me. I'm the most honorable man where I come from. Wow. They go to the soldier. Where are you going? Why are you doing this? Why are you risking your life? The soldier says, listen, I'm not a king, I'm not a general. But to have my family in the situation that it is, oppressed by this opposing nation, with a life like that, I'd rather be dead. I'm fighting for the safety and protection of my children and my family. Beautiful. You go to the horse, Mr. Horse, Mr. Seuss, what are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you doing this? And you know what the horse's answer is? I don't know. Because that's what everyone else is doing. I just got caught up in it, you know? The music and the charge is exciting. Sometimes in life, we go without thinking, like a sus. Maybe that's why they call him a workhorse. I don't know. But how many of us go through life? We go to work. And ask any father, ask any parent, any mother that works, why do you work? To give my kids the best life possible. I want to give my kid everything. But sometimes we get so caught up in the work, so caught up in the what, that we forget the why. We forgot why we went to work to begin with. And sometimes in the process of going to work to give our kids everything, we forget to give our kids the most important thing that they'll ever need in their lives. We forget to give them a father. We forget to give them a mother. We forget to give them love. Because we're so caught up in the what and we're, we're workhorses. We're just going. Because that's what people do. Tzadikim, the reason they're tzadikim is because they do one thing. They think. Before they do any action, they stop, they pause. The reason their prayer is better than mine is not because they're smarter, they have higher IQ, they have better patience, they're not ADHD, I don't know what they have. But it's one thing, it's they know how to think. You know, the Kabbalists actually added in the prayer, before every mitzvah, a small paragraph, it's called, Leshem Yehud. You know what that is? Leshem Yehud is really the rabbi's way of saying, stop, think about what you're about to do. You're about to put on tefillin. You put on tefillin every single day, and sometimes it just becomes about the tefillin, and we forget what it is. We forget what a talit represents. We forget why we light Shabbat candles. We forget what it is that we're doing. We forget to think because we're going, especially in the world that we live in. We live in such a fast-paced world. The faster, the better. Internet, it's got to be faster. This mobile provider promises faster speed, faster connection, faster food, whatever it is. Everything today is all about fast. Just do it. Just go. Faster performance. It's going to happen better. You see it in the commercials with these credit cards where everyone's running and they're going in this loop. And they go, they get the food, they pay, they swipe. They go, they get the food, they pay, they swipe. Everyone's swiping and it's working beautifully. And one guy doesn't have his credit card and he stops to pull out cash and then everyone hits him. You ever saw that commercial? Because we're going, we're fast. We don't have time for, for cash. We don't have time to stop. We don't have time to pause. We don't have time to think. This is Yetzir Ara's number one tactic. Because if you think about your life, really, the answer, Rabotai, to any problem in the world is right here. You don't need a therapist. You don't need a rabbi. The emet is that every answer is in here. Our soul knows by itself what it needs to do. Our problem is that sometimes we get too distracted by the noise. 
There's so much going on. We forget to listen to the inner voice that we have inside. We're just caught up and we're going. I ask you a question. How many minutes did you spend alone in your own thoughts today? Just add them up in your own head. How many minutes were you by yourself in your own thoughts? Does the Amidah count, Rabbi? Well, if you had Kavana, then yes. You know, there's something called nomophobia. It's a real thing. <laughs> there's a fear that people have, there's a phobia of being without your phone. No mobile phobia. God forbid that I should be without my phone. If I'm in the bathroom and I realize I forgot my phone outside, I got to run out, get the phone, run back in, because Hazve Shalom, to be four minutes with my thoughts alone. It's a real thing. Today we forgot the art of thinking. Today we forgot how to ask why. There was a child. He went to his dad one day. His dad came home. He said, Dad. The dad said, Son, I'm very, very busy. I can't talk right now. He says, Dad, I have a question. He says, Son, I'm very busy. The next day, the dad comes home. He says, Dad, I have a question. He says, Son, I can't right now. Just a lot of things. There's an email I got to answer. Go to bed. We'll talk tomorrow. The next day, the kid comes. He says, Dad, you have a minute? He says, Son, I'm so sorry. I, I can't right now. I'm running. I have a league. I have a thing. We'll, we'll catch up tomorrow. Finally, after four or five days, the kid grabs his father. He says, Dad. He says, what, 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 what do you want? He says, Dad, I have one question. Just give me 10 seconds. He says, okay, what do you like? He says, Dad, I just want to know. How much money do you make an hour? He says, what? That's what you're bothering me with? How much money do I make an hour? He says, I just, Dad, I just want to know. How much money do you make an hour? He says, I don't know. Uh, $100 an hour. He says, okay, Dad, thank you. And the kid runs away. The next night, the father comes home. He sees his son is sleeping. Father's exhausted. He gets to his bed. As he starts putting on his pajamas, he notices on his bed is a big bag, bag of coins. And there's a letter. And the letter says, Dad, if you don't mind, there's $100 in coins in the bag. If I could please have an hour of your time tomorrow. Because we're so busy to give our kids. And then we forget to give our kids. Because we never stop to ask why. We don't stop to do the most basic elementary thing. And that is to think. To succeed in life we got to slow down. You know what teshuvah means? Teshuvah, it means to repent, but it actually literally means to return. You know who we're returning to? People think we're returning to Hashem. Maybe. But actually when we do teshuvah, we're returning to ourselves. We're returning to the soul in us that has the answers but forgets to look inside for them. And we were distracted by all the noise. The Rambam writes, we blow shofar on Rosh Hashanah. And the reason we blow shofar, listen to this, the Rambam says, Uru yeshenim, wake up, you sleepy heads. The Rambam writes, wake up. But there's something very powerful about the waking up of the shofar. You know, usually when we're sleeping, think about when you're sleeping. When you wake up from a sleep, you're very passive in your sleep. You're doing nothing. And then you wake up to start doing something, right? When you're sleeping at night, you're doing nothing. And then we wake up and we start acting. We start doing. The shofar of Rosh Hashanah is the exact opposite. Rosh Hashanah says, you're doing too much. You're moving too much. You're too active. Slow down. Take a break. Think. Because we all know what we do. And we all know how. 
But sometimes we forget to ask why. We forget to think. And you know, we're very lucky because as Jews, Hashem gave us a gift. That gift is called Shabbat. Shabbat is a day that we can stop and pause and think. Shabbat is a day that we disconnect from the world. Shabbat is a day that I don't talk about business, that I don't talk about sports, that I don't talk about where I'm going and what I did. Shabbat is a day that I stop and I actually reconnect with myself. I reconnect with my family. I reconnect with my children. I reconnect with my God. Shabbat is a day that everything is on hold. Problem is that sometimes we keep Shabbat, but we miss the point. And I think this is what the rabbi was saying earlier beautifully. Is there anything wrong, Rabotai, with leaving a TV on, on Shabbat? Is there anything wrong with asking a housekeeper to turn on the TV on Shabbat? Or if she turns it on for herself, I'm just going to peek in and watch, did he get home run number 62? Is there anything wrong? Did I break a halakha? The answer is, there is nothing wrong, and there's everything wrong. Can I give you an example? I love this example because I made it up. This is my mashal. As a rabbi, I have the license to do that. I would like to share with you a mashal that I thought of. I'm sure similar mashalim have been brought down in one shape or form. But there's a very powerful example that I was thinking about. The re'im. Okay. And the example is like this. There was a boy getting married. The mother goes to the brother and says, listen, you have your brother's wedding tonight. I need you to make sure that you're shaved, you're showered, haircut, tuxedo, be at the hall at 6 p.m., don't leave till 2 a.m., and don't even think about bringing your phone. Got it? He says, got it, mommy. Shower, shave, tuxedo, haircut, be there at 6, don't leave till 2, no phone, no problemo. Day of the wedding, shave, shower, tux, kid's there at 5.55, that's a very bad number for us, but he's there early, he's there till 2, and he doesn't bring his phone. And the whole night, he's watching the game on his friend's phone. And after the night, he comes, he says, Mommy, aren't you proud of me? And the mother's crying. He says, Mommy, why are you crying? I did everything that you said. And she says, you did everything that I said, but you completely missed the point. Why did I tell you to come early? Why did I tell you to leave late? Why did I tell you not to bring your phone? Because I wanted you to enjoy the day with your brother. So you followed all the rules, but you completely missed the point. What is the point of Shabbat? The point is because we're all running and we're busy. And one day a week, God says, stop. Put it all away. Don't forget about why. Don't forget about why we do, why we're here. What's the goal? You know, there's a guy who came to shul. Shabbat morning. And he says, listen. He goes over to his friend. He says, listen, Joe. I know it's Shabbat. We don't talk about business. But I heard your house is for sale. Just wanted to know how much you're asking. His friend says, listen, Morris. You know, it's Shabbat. We don't talk about business. But I'm asking for 2.3. <laughs> he says, listen, I know it's Shabbat. We don't talk about business. But would you, would you think about 1.8? He says, listen, it's Shabbat. We don't talk about these things. Come to me after the Torah. He comes to him after the Sefer Torah, he says, listen, Joe, I know it's Shabbat, we don't talk about business, but do you think about my offer? 
Sisters, I know it's Shabbat, we don't talk about business, but I already sold it to AB. <laughs> so we know it's Shabbat, and we're not supposed to talk about business. But then we talk about business, and then we leave the TV on. And my point is not, oh, the rabbi spoke about, don't leave the TV on. It's not, my, not the point of my speech. The point is, are we stopping and thinking about our lives? The Gemara says that if a person takes large steps, if you take big steps, you lose a 60th of your vision. The Gemara says. And how do you get it back? How is it restored? Beautiful. Kos shel kiddush. I never understood. Is that a statistic? Do marathon runners actually all have glasses? Is that a thing? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they all have bad vision. But I saw one time such a powerful perush. What the Gemara means to say is that if you're going through life taking large steps, if we're always jumping and going to meeting, to league, to work, to vacation, to meeting, to lunch, to work, to vacation, to meeting, to lunch, to work, and we're taking big steps, and we're going and going and going, you know what the result's going to be? We're going to lose our perspective of life. We're going to lose our vision. We're going to forget what's important. We're going to forget why we're here. We're going to lose sight of the bigger picture. But you know how to get it back? Koshel Kiddush. Friday night is a time that we recharge. But some people, they recharge and they come back an hour later and they see their phone still on 1%. And they realize that it was never plugged into the wall. Lo <laughs> alenu. Barmanan. Man comes to Hillel and he says, Rabbi, two guys, they have a bet. Famous story, Masechet Shabbat. Could they get Hillel angry? So one guy says, I bet I could get him angry. I bet I could get him nervous. So he goes to him Friday afternoon. And he says, Rabbi Hillel, Hillel, Hillel. Hillel's in the shower. He's busy. Friday, very busy day for a rabbi. Hillel comes out. He says, yes, my son, how could I help you? He says, I have a very, very important question. And the Gemara goes on to tell us that he asks him three of the dumbest questions ever recorded in history. He asks him, why do the Babylonians have round heads? And he asks him, why do the Talmudiim have small eyes? And then he asks him, why do the Afrikiim have flat feet? Three very dumb questions. He's, his goal is to get Hillel angry. He's trying to make him impatient. And each one, Hillel gives a brilliant answer. They have round heads because they have inexperienced midwives. They have uh, small eyes because they live by the holot. They live by the sand. Flat feet. They live by the swamps. And each and every single one, he has an answer for. And I saw one time an, uh, a perush, an idea, and with this I'll close. Why do the Tarmudiim have small eyes? I don't know if he was talking about Asians. Today he called the guy xenophobic. But maybe, maybe, what he was asking, why do these Tarmudiim, we know the Gemara tells us that this group of Tarmudiim, they were very into lust. They were always chasing food and money and good time. And so he says to him, why do they have such small eyes? Why did they lose sight of the bigger picture of life? How could it be that they forgot about the important things? And you know what the answer says, Hillel? Because they live by the holot. Hol means sand, but what else does hol mean? Hamavdil ben kodesh lechol. Because they live seven days a week hol. Even the Shabbat is a chol. Even the Shabbat is a weekday. They don't think. They don't stop. They don't introspect. Teshuvah, to return, to find the answers within, to block out the noise of the world, to take a break, 
We could do it on Shabbat, but really we have to do it every day. Hashem should bless us all with a ketiva v'chatima tova. Whatever it is that we want most, Hashem should bless and grant every single one of us. And I pray that we should be able to do teshuvah in the fullest sense of the word. To be able to return to ourselves by being able to think about not only what we do, but why we do it. And then we will be able to have lives that are that much more meaningful. Thank you for listening.